Jesus Christ is Lord. And one day your knee will bow. Saints of the Most High God, this is one of the most powerful revelations and important messages that Yeshua the Messiah has ever given me to serve you. As the Antichrist is preparing to wage war against the saints of the Most High God, changing times and laws right before our eyes, mandating the abomination worldwide, it's time to get ready to flee to the mountain of the Most High God. This is one of the most important spiritual warfare messages you will receive in this last hour. Please don't take it for granted. I lay this message at your feet. I lay this message down at your feet. What you do with it is your choice. For those that were asking, we're not doing tithes and offerings, okay? You've spent enough money getting here. You've sacrificed enough. That is your offering. Amen. You traveled. Amen. You showed the faith you have in Jesus Christ to even come here. Now, I'm not saying there might be a few that had motives or whatever the case be, but I even pray that those that came with the wrong motives, I pray that your life is changed. I pray that you realize, wow. Wow. This ain't what they lied about and said it would be like. I felt God all through this conference. I felt the love of God and I felt demons come out of me and I felt the word hit me like a Mack truck. And I give all the glory to Jesus Christ. That's your offering because that is pleasing to God. Do you want to know what allowed the queen of Sheba to be impregnated with such a prince and a king like Solomon? Her willing to travel so far to bathe in wisdom. <laughs> Were you not impregnated with the word of God this evening? Amen. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, that is your offering. Number two, if any of you are struggling and you're not able to pay the, the fee to get out, because what they told us last night was, it is what it is. They're saying there's no discount, so it's about 20 bucks, $20, I think. So, don't be like prideful or whatever. Honestly, if you don't have it, talk to my wife and I um, after service. Just, we got to be quick though, but talk to us. And like I said, once we wrap up this message, we're going to pray. And I want to say that we're very grateful for every single one of you. Hi, sweetheart. Love you, love you. We're very grateful for every single one of y'all. And, and you guys are growing. Amen. The Lord is getting stronger in you and keep going. And you're being built up. You're being built up to be able to stand. It's better. It's, it's more exciting to be able to stand with this ministry and grow with all of us and leaders and shepherds. And, but at least if it, if it ever came down to it and you had nobody, let's say lights. I'm just, I'm just warning people. Okay. Lights going out something happening soon where they take over everything as much and, and i've wept and and i i could weep now as much as we miss every single one of you we would be able to make it individually because you you were doing it the right way i may have yelled at you a lot but it was right motives i told you to stop faking it start being real this is not a show Leave all that out the door. Make sure you're fasting, led by the Lord, of course. Make sure you're reading your words, studying to show yourself approved. Make sure you're, you're, you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Make sure you're not idolizing men and leadership, but just show respect, all of that, because when you put Jesus first, he'll be there when it's the worst. Amen. Let's get into the message in Jesus Christ's name. Are y'all ready? The answer is on the mountain. That just sounds good, right? Amen. The answer is on the mountain. Hallelujah. So 
this was given during a fast. Bless the Lord. This was given during a fast, and I felt so rich and empowered by this message. <laughs> I mean, who would ever think you can get such an amazing revelation on a sermon of mountains? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, I think we got time. I got to tell y'all a quick little five-minute story. Is that okay with y'all? Three people say, yeah. <laughs> Man of God, tell me about this mountain. I got to tell y'all what happened. Man. Couple, couple Sunday, couple weekends back, the Lord told my wife and I, let's do service on Stone Mountain. It's one of the big mountains in Atlanta. And uh, we went with a bunch of soldiers and we even had another family that traveled from, they originally from, um, I think it was Washington. They were with their family in Tennessee. Anyways, lovable couple, but so a bunch of us, my wife and I, and I don't want to name off the soldiers because I don't forget one person. Like, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Nicholas, but we had a great time. Ain't that right, Terry? Isabel, who else came with us that day? It was, it was an amazing time, but we're climbing up this mountain. Now, in my mind, I'm envisioning Smooth sailing, saints. I'm thinking Moses was like marching up the mountain, just going to get the tablets, gonna do my thing. Yo, yo. I started walking, and I wore those goofy shorts. You ever, yeah, any of y'all got a pair of the goofy, they like stop your leg movement so you can't like, right? You know how they be making shorts nowadays. Even the, the baggy are like tight. Because they, they want to permeate that Ahab spirit. Yeah. So we walking up this mountain, and I'm excited at first, and I'm like, wait a minute. My body's like, slow down. I see the saints just, like they do this every other day. I'm like, yo, wait, wait. They're like 30 yards up the mountain. I was like, look, I'm called to preach the word of God. I'm not called to show off my climbing skills. Okay, I think that's why Moses took so long, if you ask me. I think God was waiting for him. Moses finally gets up to the mountain like, Lord, I'm here. Lord's like, about time. And then on top of that, I got the camera. You know, I'm not even paying attention. I'm like, look, you know, I'm trying to get moments, you know, memories. I'm like, we're having a ball. It's just, boom, 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 I'm rolling down the mountain. Looking like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Had brothers helping me up. It was a good time though. But let me tell you why I said that story and why I could not give the message without giving you that funny testimony. One of you, at least one of you got to remind me to tell the other half of the story at the end of the sermon. Can we make a deal? Can I count on you, brother? Oh, I'm sorry, not you, sir. Not you. <laughs> I can count on you. You're going to remind me. I, and one of you sisters remember too, because I'm counting on a man's memory. So I, I need a woman's memory as well. And my wife is ministering as usual. Saints, my wife is like that ministering, I don't want to say ninja, you know what I mean? But she's just like. <laughs> Hi, sister. Do you know how much the Lord loves you? She's no joking. She gets so into it. And I'm that guy, like, if we're in a rush, like, I'm like, hon, we got to go. And in her mind, this is a soul right now. Everything else can wait. So there's just, like, this arm wrestle. And I try to be polite. I'm like, ma'am, hi. Did she tell you about Jesus yet? Yes. Have you prayed? You prayed? You gave your life to the Lord? Awesome. Did she give you the Bible yet? Good. Okay. Come on, hon. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? But that's her love for people. See, if you ever see her when she's in the background, that's what she's doing, saints. Or probably or probably helping to watch the children. So shout out to my wife, Lioness, amen. Amen. I would ask my wife to remind me, but one of y'all sisters gotta help a brother out now. You with the rap, you look like you can remember like an elephant, stop playing. She's like, I remember when I was born, the doctor's name was Bob. Amen, are y'all ready? The answer is on the mountain. 
Oh, this is going to be fun. It's a fun word. Y'all want a fun word? Yes. They're like, bro, I've been waiting 20 minutes. Like, I'm about to, I'm about to take your plate. <laughs> Desserts to baptism, okay? Okay, the answer is on the mountain. Now, did you know that the, the word mountain is mentioned hundreds of times? <laughs> because there's some words in the Bible that says hill, but it refers to the same word, mountain. And where I want to start with this is I want to talk about there's different attributes to mountain. And also, a mountain can represent an empire. But before we start, I wanted to show you that the enemy knows there's an importance about spirituality in mountains. So I got this quick little thing, and I got a little funny thing at the end, and we're going to get right into the word, okay? So all through pagan religions and uh, the New Age, you ever notice they'll have pictures of them high up in the mountains, right? Hinduism, there's certain high in the mountains, yoga, right? And they talk about the New Age ascended masters always being either on mountains or in some kind of mountainous palace in the, in the sky, right? And I, I just wanted to talk about that. That was all I had. Y'all be loving slideshows too much. You're like, what you passing popcorn around? <laughs> but check it out though, right? I do, I do want to show you something, all right? And I just had to because I remembered it. I remembered, y'all remember that, that guy, sadly he died. And of course, you know, I was a big movie man when I was lost in the world. I love movies. I love watching movies, going to the movies, you know what I mean? Just chilling. I think it was a blessing because now that I'm saved, I can remember a lot of things that Hollywood would reveal about their secrets. And you'd be like, oh, shoot, that's what they meant in Matrix, right? And I remembered that um, there was, hold on. I was like, you know, there's got to be something like symbolic to the mountains. Like, why is it they always boast about the mountains and you can't front? There is something different about praying in the mountains. It really is, I'm telling you. And it's something spiritual. And a lot of them, I believe, have openings, gateways, portals, doorways, windows that connect to God. Now, these in false religions, they connect to the principalities and powers. But we go far beyond that. We go to the throne. Amen? Amen. And I also wanted you to know that not only do they talk about in these mystic religions and stuff about going to actual mountains where ascended masters are, but they also talk about spiritual mountains that represent authority, where these fallen angels reside, okay? And even in comedy, even in comedy, they reveal the truth, and that's what makes it so crazy. I want you to just see this. This was Chris Farley who died, sadly. It's so sad, you know. He, uh, I think he died of like drugs and drinking. He was a depressed man, like a lot of people in Hollywood because it's all a cult. They realize money's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? And let's be real, these are still human beings. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to see how they show even in comedies about ascending to mountains. <laughs> See how they ascend up to the mountain? On this plane, it can be said by no <laughs> That's funny, keep it real. That's funny. My man just left. But I know it's funny. It's sad, I mean, because imagine if he got saved, he'd be a fun guy to be around, keep it real. There's some people that are lost in the world, you look at them. And see, if you, have the, if you start looking through the eyes of God, you don't just be looking at people and being like, evil, evil, Illuminati. 
what if God saved that woman? What if God saved Beyonce? I bet you she'd be a cool sister. Amen. You know what I'm saying? What if God was able to save who? The game from Cali. I'll buy him lunch. You know what I'm saying? Play your game. Let's talk. You want to talk about Jesus? Yeah, let's talk about Jesus. I love Jesus now. You see, you can't do that, saints. You have to be a righteous judge. That's a message that I'm really excited God is cooking. But I wanted to show that now because there's this thing about mountains, right? The answer is on the mountain. So, let me go back to the title. So, I went on this journey. And I didn't think, I thought it was going to be like a dinner table message or something. And it ended up being so empowering and so exciting that it made it to the conference. Well, at least one of the days. Because we preached it, another message yesterday. Okay, well, let's go ahead, saints. I, I say let's get into it. Amen. Father God, bring your, for, your word forth with power and authority. Empower us and encourage us and convict us if needed. Wash us and guide us and may your light... May your word be a light unto our feet in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, there are holy mountains. There are prominent mountains with significance, symbolism. There's even satanic mountains. You do know this. Do you even know that um, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter, uh, excuse me, in the book of Enoch, chapter 6. Now, I tell people, Believing in Enoch or not should not be a separatable situation. Like, we should not divide and you shouldn't walk away from the ministry because I, I believe that book is real. Whatever, if you don't want to, I mean, that's not a salvation issue. Can we all agree on that? However, Genesis 6 is real. In your eyes, amen? And it talks about the fallen angels that came down to the earth, mingled with the daughters of men because we got children in the room, and they gave birth to half man, half angelic creatures. That's crazy. But Enoch 6 says they landed on Mount Hermon. Write that down. And the thing about it is, now I am going to be quick, so probably write scriptures down if you're not able to keep up. But what's interesting, it says in Enoch that they swore an oath on the top of the mountain that they would commit to their sin and take wives. What is the significance on why they swore an oath on the top of the mountain? Is there a difference? Well, let's go. So, oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, so let me just get there first. I just got to run ahead of y'all for one minute to do something. Hold on. Don't stone a brother. I'll be right back now. Be right back. Put the, put the rock down. Man. You know, sometimes preachers and Pat, they have brain farts and don't even realize it sometimes when they're preaching. We'll say one book and actually be reading out of another book. So we're tired sometimes, you know, like turn to Psalms 6000. Like, oh, I, need, I need to go to bed. But Luke 9, 28. I want you to see the significance of mountains to Jesus. I think that would be the best example, right? I mean, if the Son of God has this drawing to go to mountains, we should take heed to that if we're going to be Christ-like, amen? Okay. Y'all there? Luke 9, 28. Look what it says. And it came to pass about an, on the eighth day after these saying, he took Peter, John, and James and went up into a what? Mountain to pray. Go to Mark chapter 3. Now, come on. I told you we're going to be quick with it. Mark 3. You there? All right. Wait for me. Mark chapter 3, verse 13. Y'all having a good time? Amen. Praise God. It says, and he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would they came unto him. All through the Bible, saints, we'll do maybe one or two more. Go to John 6, 3. I'll read it. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Remember Matthew chapter 5? It's called the famous what? 
Sermon on the... Y'all knew that meant mountain, right? <laughs> like, I thought it was a street. Right? Go to Matthew chapter 14. Amen. Matthew chapter 14. Look at what it says, verse 23. And, he, and when he had sent, he sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. That is so important. You notice how he would take his disciples to mountains to pray, but then there'd be times where he wanted to be alone with his father. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to give you something to write down that you can read on your own time. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Luke 21, 37. Okay? And what we're going to do to save time is I just simply want to have fun and give you the importance and significance of the mountain so that way it inspires you. Yes. Okay. What a gentleman. You know what I mean? You preach something. Like, Yo! Pastor, slow down. <laughs> Appreciate that, brother. Matthew 14, 23. Matthew 5, 1. Luke 6, 12. Luke 21, 37. Now, let's talk about the different amazing revelations that God has shown me about mountains. Wow. Number one, Jesus went to the mountains very often. Okay? Number two. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Wow. Wow. Go to Isaiah 13. Let's do it. That must be, I must frustrate some of y'all at the dinner table videos. When I get caught in the zone, I'm like, what? What are you saying? Tell me. Huh? Oh, that's the worst. I'm writing it down. He's like, I'm going to kick his door open and steal his notebook. God forbid. Isaiah 13. Y'all there? Amen. Look at what verse 2 says. This is amazing. Lift you up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Now, this word here is an interesting word meaning signal. And to get the Lord's attention. Well, let me say this. To get the attention for help or a need. They would climb a high mountain and raise up a banner, a flag, in a time of need. Are y'all seeing it? So, in a time of your need, you have to climb a mountain and raise up a banner to the Lord in a time of need. Are y'all seeing it? Now, the interesting thing, and I have to tell you this testimony... I felt this conviction. I wanted to go to the mountain before each conference uh, Saturday and today. But so many things were happening. People were calling, uh, you know, family members on their deathbed and just people in need. And by the time we got done here and by the time we fed the boys, it was like three in the morning and we're up at nine like, all right, we're ready. Right? All worth it, of course. But I just, I felt so convicted. I was like, Lord. You put it on my heart to just actually just alone go to Stone Mountain. You imagine dragging your children to the mountain at five in the morning. It's still cold. The Lord was like, Psst, come alone. You know what I mean? And I really wanted to go to the mountain. And I even timed it out. I was like, if I get up at this time, it takes about a half hour to get there. It takes about 40. Well, for me, for them, it's about a 35 minute walk for me. About an hour and a half. I'm just kidding. Right? By the time I get to the mountain, spend some time, I planned it out. But it just didn't happen. But I realized that God had placed it on my heart 
because he wanted me to make sure I make it very known to all of you beloved brothers and sisters. Amen. Some people got not one mountain in sight where they're from. Some of y'all are going back to New York. Ain't no mountains near you. Some of y'all have places where you ain't, you have no way. Maybe you in a place where there's mountains, but you ain't got no, you got no way to get there. So clearly we're going somewhere with this, that there is what you call climbing the spiritual mountain. Amen. 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 However, I must say, if you're able to get to a mountain, do it and climb it. Now, if you live near Mount Everest, I'm not saying <laughs> go to the top. Like, he was a great man. <laughs> I don't know what happened. He listened to some guy online and <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, that's why you got to be led of what? Led, that's funny. Led of the spirit. Do you know people can do a 40 day, 40 day fast and God is not pleased because he didn't lead them to do it? That's why it says, and Jesus being led of the spirit went on a 40. Anyways. So when you're in need, you have to climb the spiritual mountain, and if you can, do a physical mountain as well, because Jesus was climbing physical mountains. Can I get an amen? amen? And raise up a flag in the spirit. Cry out to God from on high. Amen. And say, Lord, I am in distress. I need you right now. Save me and my family. Save the people, God. Isn't that interesting? Number two, mountains bring peace. Ah, Psalm 72, 3, let's go. Come on, saints, we got to go through these now. Psalm 72, verse 3. I'm going to read it in Jesus' name. It says, the mountain shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. So write down that mountains bring peace. Oh, this is fun. I love this. One of my favorite messages. I want you to write down Isaiah 55, verse 12. And Isaiah 44, verse 23. 44? Yep. 44, 23. I'm going to go ahead real quick. I'm just going to read 44:23 to you. In Jesus Christ's name. Sing, O you heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains. Wow, that's beautiful, ain't it? So I meditated on that. I'm like, wow. So I could literally see when Jesus Christ would go to a mountain, and he loved to sing, by the way. I don't know if you know that about Jesus Christ. He loves to sing. Wait a minute, wow, I gotta, I gotta bow my knee to that one. Could you imagine one day we get to hear Jesus sing? Wow, wow. But I can imagine Jesus Christ going to the mountains alone and when he would sing to God the Father, the mountains would sing with him. Isn't that amazing? And what's interesting about a mountain and Certain yoga and new age and Hindus, they, they, they realize that your voice can create a very interesting thing and echo and sound like there's multiple of you. So there's a time you can actually go onto the mountains and sing and it sounds like there's people singing with you. Right? But I want you to write down, oh no, 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 I can't give that to them yet, Lord. Wait. Huh? No, you guys are going to get it, just not yet. I love this one. Love this one. Go to Jeremiah 31 verse. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jeremiah 30. No, no, no. Write Jeremiah 31 5. Write that down. Write down Proverbs 27 25. Okay? You got those two? And we're going to Genesis 49, 26. Let's go. Who can get there first? Who can get there first? Who's going to do it? Genesis 
4926. Amen. Y'all ready for it? The blessing of thy father have prevailed above the blessing of my... Y'all brothers need to help me. Progenitors. Progenitors. Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. But you should see how the blessings and the fruit will be on the utmost bounds of the everlasting hills. That word hills in the original language is referring to mountains, okay? And this is interesting because the one I'm going to just simply read to you is Jeremiah 31. So there's a blessing on the mountain, right? Jeremiah 31. And again, this is a spiritual warfare message, and you're going to take this back home with you. I'm telling you, life will never be the same. Glory be to Christ. Amen. Jeremiah now, 31.5. I'm just going to read it real quickly. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and eat them also that come in things. So let me ask you a question. So what does that tell you about mountains? They're very fruitful. Mountains is an excellent place to find fruit. Oh, come on. There's nowhere to do to walk away. You think it's coincidence that in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And if we're dealing with a spiritual mountain, maybe this is where we discover the fruit on the mountain. Are y'all following? All right, let's go ahead. Let's do it then. Amos chapter 4, verse 13. And as soon as I read this, the revelation that God gave me, I literally fell on my face. I believe I did. Or at least I was just amazed and fell back in my chair. One or the other. <laughs> no, I'm serious. He's so good. I'm like, a, can I say fan? Is that all right? Um, I want to say his biggest fan. But I might get some of y'all to meet me in the parking lot like, I heard what you said. <laughs> You're not the biggest fan, okay, pal? But check this out. I love the Lord. Y'all there? Amen. Amos what? Tell me. That's right. Hold on. <laughs> Hallelujah. What am I doing? You ever get stuck on that like slow paging for some reason where these pages are taking forever? Amos, come on, where you at? Okay, there you are. Amos 4. I want you to hear this carefully and, and read it in the spirit. Okay? For lo, he that formeth the mountains and created the wind and declareth unto man what is his thoughts, his thought that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth, the Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. Now, as soon as I read that, the Holy Spirit gave me the revelation. Remember in the book of Acts, here it is. See, I don't want to do it yet, Lord. They went up into a spiritual mountain called the upper room, and because they formed their mountain first, it created the wind to come rushing in. Come on. The mountain is first formed and then the wind is created. If you want a rushing wind to come your way, maybe you haven't formed the mountain yet. Wow. You ever wonder why they were in the upper room? Spiritual. I want you to go to the book of Isaiah 52, 7. Fifty-two seven. I'm going to read it in Jesus Christ's name. It says, "How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings." You know what that remind me of? Go to Romans. 
You know what that remind me of? Go to Romans 10, verse 15. Look at, watch, watch Paul was trying to tell us a mystery of mountains and we didn't even know it. What does 10, 15 say? Somebody better tell the brother. It says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preacheth the gospel of peace. Didn't we just read that when it was talking about being on the mountain? So this lets you know that those that walk in the spirit walk up and down the mountain of God. And even though I'm physically here with you now, I am on a mountain talking to you. Oh, let me see if I can do the walk away without the speaker wilding on a brother. Oh, shoot, I've got the walk. I knew it was going to happen. Way better, way better. Are y'all starting to see this amazing revelation? Okay. Haggai 1.8. Haggai 1.8. Now Haggai, you got to watch out for. You will, you will do 80 by him. Hmm? Good catch. You got see that bubble up in you, brother? You about to come up here and read. <laughs> Haggai, that's right. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Isn't that interesting? Go up to the mountain, sister, brother. The reason why you keep stumbling is you haven't gone up to the mountain. But don't forget the wood. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I read that, I caught something in the spirit. You know what? I got to keep it 100 with y'all before I end up pupilless. <laughs> Are y'all ready? Go up to the mountain and bring wood. Say it again, soldier. Carry your cross up that mountain. That's that wood. Because he already built the foundation. The house is already built. The house is Christ. Don't forget the wood before you go up that mountain. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. We, we moving here. We moving. I think it's safe to say we can talk about something important. What did Jesus Christ say about being a light in Matthew chapter four, uh, chapter five, verse fourteen? Where did he specifically say it? Let's go. Who can get there first? Matthew five fourteen. Boom. We there. We in the building. Oh wow. Amen. Okay. Look what it said. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. But guess what that word hill is? That's right. And a uh, fun fact, if, if you would like, it's called oros. Write that down, O-R-O-S. Oh, that's cool. Oh, but yeah. Oros. Okay. Now, so... What if one of the reasons why our city is in a mess and what if one of the reasons why the hometown that you live in is in utter chaos is because you have not climbed the oros to shine light over the city, to fight the darkness. See, I, I told you this message is so amazing. Well, God is amazing through the message. Say it like it should be. I didn't know that. Did you hear that? Thank you, soldier. A lot of state capitals are on hills. That sound correct to me, bruh. Now look, we're going through these step by step, but what if I told you I got a surprise? What if I told you I see a mystery? Oh, uh, how many here would like to be what they call raptured? The, the harpazo, the catching away of the saints. Raise of hands. 
Anyone not raising hands? Let me know, I'll pray for you. <laughs> like, no, I'd like to stay down here and be beheaded. Hey, listen, don't get it twisted. There are some that are called to stay. But, okay. Are y'all hands still up? Okay, make sure. I want you to go with me. Oh, this is so good. I want you to go with me to Mark 9 to 8. Come on, we almost there. We wrapping up for the night now. We got to get these baptisms done. Hallelujah. And we got to get y'all on y'all planes. Amen. Jesus name. Well, I'm just going to say chapter 9 and I'm going to paraphrase it. This is the great what? Transfiguration. When Jesus, he takes after, it says after six days, Jesus taketh him, Peter, James, and John, up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. The Bible says it does not yet appear, but it, 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 it is clear that we know that when he returns, we shall be like him, we shall change. That means we would literally transfigure and be caught up into the clouds. How amazing is this? Now, here's what's interesting, and there's other people that have done this theory, and I, I'm with it. I see it for what it is, and I preached on it. How from Adam to Christ is 4,000 years biblical time. That doesn't mean the earth could be a million years old. Because God could have took his time creating everything, but the time frame of man, you understand? From Adam to Christ is 4,000 years, and from Christ to now is 2,000 years, equaling six days. God created everything in six days, and he rested on the seventh day. Talk to me. He rested on the seventh day. So if this is the case, and the Bible says in Peter that the, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. In a thousand years as one day. Imagine that. Gotta have me tight. Jesus, my best friend. He's like, I'll be back in a day. I'm like, no, Jesus, no. A thousand years. That's just a day to you. I love you. I ain't, I'll, I'll hold on to his guy. He'll drag me. Just Right? But a thousand years, like one day to the Lord. Y'all ready for it? This you already know, most of you, but this ain't the one I'm getting to. From Adam to Christ is 4,000 years. From Christ to now is 2,000 years. And when Christ comes back, he's reigning for one day or 1,000 years, making the seventh day is the day of rest. It's the day we rest in him. We reign with him for 1,000 years. We're relaxed, resting. There's no stank devils around. There's nothing, right? We're just in his presence. Okay. It said on the sixth day, he transfigured. Why would God just throw that in there? What's the important? Like, what, the, what does it matter that six days later? Unless he was trying to tell us on the sixth day or the six thousandth day, which happens to be where we're at. You do know four plus two is six. <laughs> Some of y'all was like, what are you saying? The rapture. The, the harpazo, he transfigured on the sixth day. We will change. It's happened. Saints, it's coming. Be aware of the mark of the beast and everything going on, but focus on the return of the Lord. Amen. That's our hope. Don't focus on the vaccine and all of this garbage. Focus on the real Savior coming. The real Messiah coming. Okay, y'all ready for it? I want you to go to the book of the Songs of Solomon. Look at all the sisters, like, ooh. Psalms is no joke, man. My dear Ro, I love you like flowers. Your eyes are like milk flowing down your cheeks. Yo, know, my man went in. He went in. He definitely would have had whatever he wanted for dinner that night. I'll tell you that right now. One of your brothers is going to get caught watched by your wife. You'll be like, honey, I wrote something for you. 
Your breasts are like roses. What? I read that in songs, you thief and liar. Let's come up with your own poem, bro. Are y'all ready for it, though? What if I told you that there is a secret message that God wants us to know? And I was like, why is it that a, a message about mountains would be so important? Are y'all ready for it in the back? Are y'all ready for it over at the right? Yeah. The middle? Yeah. Left? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nah, we, we got time for that. Chapter 2. Are y'all ready? Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. We got to start from verse 1. I'm sorry, we have to. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Who is that? Say it again. That's right. You in a different time zone? What's just, just happening here? <laughs> Amen. Love you. That was, that was perfect. Because you notice she said it boldly alone. She was like, I don't care what nobody got to say. It's Jesus Christ. That's right, girl. Love you. Are y'all ready? As the lily among thorns... So is my love among the daughters as the apple tree among the trees of wood. So is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Are y'all ready? It's, it's about to get real now. Hold on. Let me, let me get there now. I got all excited here. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Are we not at a banqueting house? Amen. Have we not felt the banner of love? Amen. Oh, that's so good. Wow. His left hand is under my head. His right hand doth embrace me. All y'all sisters is visualizing that romantic Lifetime movie. He was like, baby. Yes. <laughs> it's real, though. The Lord is our husband, fellas, that makes you a bride. Some of y'all puffing up like, I ain't no woman, dog. And besides, you cast that girl spit out of me in the name of the Lord. Right? Symbolically, we are the bride because we become one with Jesus. Hey, this is good. Are y'all ready for it? Oh, let's see Jesus now. I charge you, O you daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that you stir not up, nor awake my love till he please. Are you ready for it? The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the... He come leaping upon the... The mountains skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. The, the catching away of the saints. Rise up, my love, and come away with me. But if you're not on the mountain, when he comes leaping, you're not going nowhere. Now do you see the importance of the mountain? Wow. Wow, Lord. Isn't that amazing? Say, Lord, take me away. Help me to make it to the mountaintop. I want you to take me out of here. My family and us is, as family in ministry. In Jesus Christ's name. Wow. What if I told you it gets deeper? Do you think it's a coincidence? Right? Psalms 11.1. 1. We got to do this to save time. Psalms 11.1. 1. Psalms 121, verse 1. We're going to read Matthew 24, verse 6. Let's go. 
I opened up to Matthew 25. I was so close. I love when God speaks that way. If anybody opens directly up to a verse, let it be known. That's a very big sign. Matthew 24, 6. We got to be quick. Let's go. And you shall hear of wars. You hearing this? And rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. I just don't want us to read the entire chapter. So let me, let me fast forward it to you. Okay, go down to... Okay, verse 15. We just preached a warning message on the, vac on, on the you know what, right? Look what it says. In the word, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, stand in the holy place. There is no physical holy place. You stand in the Holy Ghost. They're reading it wrong, guys. But look what he says after that. Them and let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Because you know the time is drawn nigh for the what? Our fair our, to be caught away. Just like it said in song, Song of Solomon. To be caught away out of here. Right? All right. So this mountain thing is real, y'all. I'm telling you. Now, this one right here was really hit me. Did you know that in Exodus 34 or, you know, 31, 18, but when, when Moses brought the stone tablet down, the two tablets, right? Did you know that those tablets were, were literally a part of Mount Sinai? It was a part of the mountain. Have you ever considered that? And that means that tonight, no matter where you go, and yes, you will be missed, and we pray to God that we'll be able to do more conferences. But just know a piece of this mountain goes with you. Amen. If all of you online, we love you so much, wherever you are on the earth, take the peace of the mountain of God with you. They carried a part of Mount Sinai written with God's command. But it gets deeper, y'all. Micah chapter 4, verse 1, go. Micah, yep. 4-1. Look at what it says. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow unto it. And that's when it hit me. When you deal with the spirit realm, Jamaican side almost came out of me. I grew up around Jamaicans. When I get like certain times in my life, I just start talking Jamaican. Don't hate on a brother. <laughs> At least I'm real. I am who I am. You know what I'm saying? I ain't here to fake it with nobody. Some of y'all be faking it at work. You put on the Mr. Rogers voice when the supervisor comes in. Just, Bob, how you doing? Good day. Good golly. As soon as he walk away, yo, what deal, my, you know what I mean? This dude, man, he didn't give me a raise yet. Man, I'm out of this piece, B. You just sounded like Mr. Rogers. But... Listen to this carefully. Meditating on this. God's throne, his, his house, is on a mountain. Saints, but you got to understand what a mountain represents. A mountain is safety. A mountain is wealth. A mountain is great to plant. They, even in Israel, they plant the, the vines along the mountain because the water runs the water runs down and it feeds it well, right? That's right. There's the dew on the mountain. But could it be possible? Oh, Lord, I can't tap into it yet, Lord. I'll just say it. Could it be possible, because we got to talk about the wicked mountains. Could it be possible that the reason why you haven't had victory against certain thrones in the heavenlies is because you are not speaking to the mountain that's holding up the throne. Oh! Thank you, Jesus. 
Because I remember in the Bible, I remember when the Lord said in Matthew 17, 20, if you have faith, you can say to this mountain, come up and be cast into the sea. So if there is a kingdom of addiction overwhelming you in your house, you're not fighting its stronghold. The mountain. <laughs> but what if I told you it goes deeper? I told y'all, man, this word is so good. Oh, Lord. As soon as I read this, I was like, Lord, I love boasting in the Lord. I, I like, I'm like, Lord, you, you, you are all that. You are no joke. Like, you are, and when I compliment him like that, he, he kind of gets like, oh you, <laughs> oh, you think so, huh? He has five more revelations. I'm like, oh, uh, 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 yeah, wow. You really are all that. He's like, oh, yeah, take that. I'm like, well, you are, right? Watch this. Because he gets the glory, amen? amen? Go to Exodus 19, 13. Who can get there first? Amen. Hold on, don't be boasting with that amen. It's like the second book. You're like, amen, I found it. Amen. I found it. Y'all ready? What does it say in Exodus 19, 30? No, 13. Exodus, oh, oh sorry, I thought you said 30. It says... Referring to the mountain of God, there shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be a beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come up to the mound. Now listen. See, this is phenomenal because with the mountain of God is so holy that if an animal strayed and just touched the brim of it, it was put to death. And I meditated on that. I said the reason why Satan pushes so much worldliness and carnality upon the Christian communities and assigns them fake shepherds and fake YouTube channels and people that are not really strengthening you to be holy and righteous is because he wants you to be like a beast and, and you want to eat, even to pursue the mountain, God is like, nah, you're a filthy animal. Get away from my mountain. Are y'all catching it? That's why you need to be renewed in the spirit and have the fruit of the Holy Spirit or you're not even allowed to touch the mountain. You're not even allowed to touch the mountain if you behave like a beast. Especially take the mark of the beast. And maybe those who take the mark of the beast can't climb the mountain of God and they definitely ain't getting taken out of here when he comes swooping by. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Should I do it now? Yeah, I'll do it now. Thank you. Love you, love you. One thing I said to my wife and children and our beloved brothers and sisters that were with us on the mountain when we had the service on the weekend, I said, guys, I realize why now one of the reasons why worshiping the Lord on the top of a mountain is so special and so intimate. It isn't necessarily, although being high up has a spiritual significance because you're closer to the Most High, right? But a, a Pharisee could be on the top of a mountain and you could be down in the valley and still be closer to God. Why? Because your spiritual mountain is higher than his. When Jonah was swallowed in the belly of the fish, his prayer was heard in the depths of the earth, but yet that doesn't make sense. It's be okay, leave that alone. Get back to the story. I was saying to the saints, I said, although with the importance of being high up is so significant, I said, you know what makes the top of a mountain so special is what it takes to get I'm, I gotta go, y'all. It's what it takes to get there. It takes labor. 
I was beat that day. My back hurt. My wife and I were sleeping like old people. I was like, you feel sore? She's like, yeah, I feel sore. It was the labor. It, it, it made us appreciate that time up there. And then on top of that, we got to the top, and you know we had the little ones with us, and the wind was blowing. It was like 10 degrees out. We're just like, I had like this long... I had a long drawn out sermon, but when I seen all of the congregants like shivering, I'm like, okay, we're just going to read a couple chap verses from Matthew 5. Blessed are they that, all right, Father, we had a good time. We got to get these people down before they freeze to death. But while we were up there, I'm telling you, and I made a video, I was on a flight, and I, there was this, I, it was like this power, and I could feel, God said, pray to me. Pray to me something you've really been wanting that you need in my will. Do it now. And I realized I, I passed. I was high up like a mountain in that plane. Wow, I just caught this. How many of y'all flying? How many of y'all are flying? Some of y'all looking jealous like, <laughs> whatever. Whoever's flying, you better treat it like a mountain on your way home. Oh, ain't that beautiful? <laughs> Anyone online, if you fly, treat it like a mountain. Now listen, up there on that mountain, we, we felt the power of God. But we also appreciated what it took to get up there. We literally had to stop halfway, and we started worshiping the Lord, and we started praising. Y'all remember? All of a sudden, people started surrounding us. And of course, you had your phoners. You know what I mean? We just block them out, you know what I mean? And we just glorify in the Lord. And anyways, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Let's wrap this up, saints. We got to wrap this up now. Check this out. There are devilish mountains, like Hollywood Hills, right? The Vatican has seven hills. Did you know that? Seven oros, seven mountains, okay? What if I told you that, ah, uh, this is so good. All right, let's just do it real quick. Luke five, uh, 4, verse 5. Quick, who can get there? We, we got to wrap up, guys. Luke 4, verse 5. Look at what it says. And the devil taketh him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment in time. Wait, pause. The devil got a mountain? Do you see it? Well, what if I told you in the gathering and demoniac, Mark chapter 5, just real quick, I'm reading it. And always night and day he was in the what? Mountains, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. Because why? This, wow, this is so good. This shows you. Oh, this, Lord, it's just so good, y'all. How can a man be dumb enough to try to take the credit when you know it ain't you? The Lord ain't no, I'll just be walking. He'll just, just drop it in me. I'm like, oop. Oh, okay, I'll go home and read on it. Listen to this. Are y'all ready for it? What kept the gathering of demoniac possessed for so long? He was in one of the mountains of the enemy and it was reinforcing the power into him. He was in the kingdom of the enemy, therefore he was bound by the... Ah, oh, come on. Come on, man. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's why I love having people of God that'll throw extra nuggets. Notice that the swine ran off the cliff down below. Even the pigs were like, I gotta get off this mountain and just... See ya. I got a better chance down there. Right? We got to be quick now. And Zechariah 4, 7, you're going to read it on your own time. It calls, God is making war with a mountain. He says, oh, great mountain. And he declares judgment on that mountain. But that lets you know that mountains represent kingdoms and fortresses and powers. Oh, this is, I love it. Lord. Can y'all just say thank you to Jesus Christ? Now here's the interesting thing. 
I'm going to tell you what it means. You're going to write the verse down the same time. Isaiah 42, 15, write it down. Psalms 97, 5. Isaiah 42, 15. Psalms 97, 5. In both these different verses, God says, I will make waste your mountains. In another one, he says, I will melt, melt the mountains. You see? Because he will take down the kingdoms of Satan. Oh, this is good, y'all. Do you think it's a coincidence that in Luke 23, 30, write that down. As well as Luke 23, 30, as well as Revelation 6, 15. They say to the mountains, fall on us that we may hide ourselves from the, good job, it's bubbling in you. That they may hide ourselves from the wrath of the Lamb. They wanted to rely on that which empowers them, but it does them no good. Can I get an amen? Yes. Oh, that's good. Did you hear that? Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know, Jesus talked about those that climb in a different way. They're a thief. What do you, what do, you do with a mountain? You climb it. Thank you. Revelation chapter 17, verse 9. I want you to write it down. It talks about the whore riding the beast and all that stuff we talked about, right? She sits upon seven mountains. Right? Well, here's the thing. I don't want to spend too much time on the mountains of the enemy. We can go super deep into that, but I would rather tell you a mystery in Micah chapter 1. Who's going to get there? That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. Micah. Let's go. Chapter 1. I'm going to read it. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. What if I told you verse after verse after verse, I'll put them on the screen when I do the video, Lord willing. Verse after verse, it says that God will come out of his holy place and come down upon his mountain. Come down his mountain. Right? That lets you know that if you want God to move and come down upon you, maybe you should think about getting to the top of his mountain. And what if I told you that because it's illogical to think this only has a more important reference to being a physical mountain rather than a spiritual would be foolish to say, although I do say I do love literal mountains as well. However, what if in the spirit realm, the way you climb up the mountain of God is by following after Christ and his life, his commands, obeying him, loving your enemies, walking in the, why does it say walk in the spirit? The only way to climb the mountain of God is to walk in the spirit up the mountain of God. And the more you walk in holiness and righteousness, the further up the mountain of God you go. Wow. Amen. And water comes down to what? Refresh us. Thank you, brother. You ready for it? Who went up the mountain with Moses? Say it again. Joshua. Not his girl. Sometimes levity is, is given at the wrong time. Joshua went with Moses up the mountain, but he didn't go to the top. He didn't go to the top. Now, you can look at this two ways because they're honorable men, but I've seen it in the spirit that some people make it on the mountain, but they don't go to the top of the mountain. They turn, oh, wow, wow. Oh, we got to go, y'all. They turn religious some way, somewhere up the mountain, they start to change. 
They were walking up that mountain. They were praying. They were reading. They were fasting. They were praying. They were reading. They were fasting. They were praying. They were reading. They were fasting. They were doing their thing, right? They were loving one another. But then someone came into their life, started shifting them, teaching them false doctrine. They gave, hey, they gave heed to weird things, and they went back to the law, and they doing all this stuff, and they got paused on the mountain. And all they could do was watch the other man or woman go to the top. Wow. That's deep. Amen. Now, before we wrap up, we got something to talk about. I want you to write these down, but we got to be quick. I want you to write down Mount Ararat. A-R-A-R-A-T. I want you to write down next to that Genesis 8, 4. Now, Mount Ararat in Genesis 8, 4, you will read on your own time because we got to get out of here. This is where Jonah lands the ark. Did I say Jonah? Yeah. Noah. Yes. Noah. Did I say the brain farts be kicking in? I'm running on four hours of sleep. And some digested French toast, okay? Just have mercy on a brother. Hmm? Don't miss, the, don't miss the, the nugget though, right? It's a difference if I actually believe that. But Noah, I can see Jonah, Noah, okay, I get it. Noah landed on the top of a mountain after God destroyed everything. We will dwell with Jesus when he destroys everything on the mountain of God. Oh, man. Yes. So now, you wrote that one down. I want you to write down the Mount of Olives. And I want you to write Luke twenty-two thirty-nine. 39. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9, read forward. Please write fast. I, I don't want to keep repeating. And so the Mount of Olives, Luke 22, 39, and Acts 1, 9. And here's the thing. This is what is so phenomenal about this mountain, men of God, women of God, and growing men and women of God. Amen? Amen. Is this was a special mountain to Jesus Christ. This is where he was praying. And remember, he was, it was like he was sweating drops of blood. There was a whole lot going on. And what I found interesting as I was meditating on this, y'all are going to love this. As he was on his knees and he was praying and he was like, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. And a lot of people don't realize and understand. Remember what I said about earlier, e even when it comes to me, how you treat me, right? Because I would do the same thing with a shepherd in my life. I would always show him gratitude and be like, yo, that message, bruh, that helped me drop the bottle, man. I really thank God for you. Nobody could accuse me of idolizing him if I do it properly. But I also have a side where Paul said in Romans, when I try to do good, I, why you think, saints, you don't get it by now? Why I, God didn't want me to go the music route? No way. You know how many songs where it's, it's about me and my weaknesses and my growth and the reason why the music God has put out through my wife and I is very special in, in a sense where it's for his real children. Because when you listen to it, you cry and weep. Like when you think of like, save me from myself. Save me from myself. That's real. You can you can you relate to that? You get mad at yourself. Like, How did I do that again? I said I would not do that, and I did that. You got songs like "I Don't Want to Be Numb," songs like "Remember Me," uh, "Grace." Every time I'm falling, I call. I hear the voice of grace. Right? I'm keeping it real with people, cause too many leaders act like they do do don't be stinking. Right? But I don't ever want you to get it confused. Don't think I'm a regular guy either, though. Like, oh, he probably smokes weed. No. I fear God, y'all. But I just say that out of humility, that just like Paul said, he got a flesh side that he got a war against. Did you know it was the same thing with Jesus? Oh, don't, oh, don't, don't get up and go now. Don't, no, don't do it. 
Don't hang, don't, uh, don't take off the video. Jesus had to learn because God became man. Are y'all seeing this? It says in the word of God, did you know the Bible says, butter and honey shall he eat that he may learn how to refuse evil and how to do good, referring to Jesus Christ. I could get into the mystery of how when God came to the earth as a human being, he had to, he's so powerful, should I do it, Lord? He literally left everything back and started fresh. He, in other words, to get power, he had to work into it and gain it. He couldn't cheat. He couldn't just like, Pops, can you hook it up? He had to walk in it and gain it back by fasting and praying and subjecting and or casting down imaginations and fighting the flesh and all of that. You, you understand? So let me show you the great struggle. Let me show you how amazing this uh, nugget is about this mountain. On this mountain, Jesus says, if it be possible, Lord, remove this cup from me. Right? He's like, uh, Father, I ain't going to lie to you. You know that. I can't lie. He's in the Mount of Olives. And he's trying to avoid the situation, which shows you there was still a little bit of his human side trying to stay alive. Did you know at that moment, Jesus flatlined and, oh, this, this, what a way to end the night. Thank you, Lord. And do you know that when the Roman guards came to him, because at that moment he flatlined, he utterly died. He died before he went to the cross. Oh, <laughs> Right? When the Roman guards came to him, he said, who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. Now, these, these ain't no little Steve Urkels and Screeches. These are Roman. It's like, an, it's like wrestlers in like full armor, just jacked up. Just, yeah, we're here for Jesus of Nazareth. All he did, literally, I want you to imagine this. Who's willing to take a little tumble for a brother? Let's come on and take a little tumble for a brother. I want you to stand right in front of this thing right here. Come a little closer, a little closer. And, and, and I'm, I'm just going to say, I am he, referring to Christ, who's far above me. You asked who is he, and you're going to fall right back. Just don't hurt yourself. I, I am he. <laughs> Saints, legit, how could words make grown, thank you, bro, make grown masculine men fall back? You want to know why? In that moment when he flatlines, oh, wow, Lord, I glorify your name for this. I'm catching this now. This hit me now, saying this ain't in the book over here. When he flatlined, the power was so manifested in him that just the very word of declaring that he's fully God made them fall back. But saints, what if I told you what the mountain means? Did you know, and you can look it up, this particular mountain <laughs> has a very ancient cemetery. What would be the odds that Jesus Christ had to flatline on a mountain that was a burial site? Oh, I'm done. Gol it dripped off his head. That's Golgotha. No, oh, you talk about no. You talk about when they step on the. That I, that's one underrated message too, man. What's it? Uh, what's it called? Um. No, the name of the message: the eternal wine of Yahweh. I don't. I don't get it, man. People don't. They don't add up. But anyways, thank you, brother. So you have Mount Moriah, and you notice that the dome of Islam is on that rock. You notice that, right? Okay, we, we, gotta, we gotta wrap this up, saints. So, and then Mount Zion is, is where I wanna wrap up with. You're gonna look up these scriptures yourself and I'll put them on the screen, but because we have to go, there are so many scriptures that say God will protect his people on Mount Zion. I really believe that God has shown me something that is going to bring refuge to the saints of the Most High God. And it's very terrifying. And I'm wondering, Lord, 
are you literally meaning the literal Mount Zion that when everything is happening on the earth, God's people will be reserved in that mountain. Read it yourself. There's scriptures about my people shall be preserved in my Mount Zion. Or could we have a way to be on his spiritual Mount Zion where we are able to do you know you can get to a place in your walk with Jesus Christ that when just how the Buddhists, they legitimately do levitate. They do go into the astral realm we have we have brothers that used to astral project and god delivered them and sisters do uh, ha, uh were doing it in the world as well but what if there is a way where you could literally meditate on the word of god and pray and literally leave and go into the spiritual mountain of god and and meet with god there and fellowship with god there and talk with god there why who dares tell you that that can't be done but did you know that i believe that satan has an art he's he's angry because did you know that lucifer in ezekiel 28 walked up and down the mountain of god he experienced the mountain of god so because we have to get people out of here Let's pray, saints. I want you to say it with me in one accord. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this amazing word. Thank you for this amazing Lord, Lord, I want to climb your mountain. I want to know you. My protection is on your mountain. Holy Mount Zion. Lord, place me there supernaturally. And my family and all your children that are saved. Lord, your mountain makes my feet beautiful. Your mountains will sing while I sing to you. When I form the mountain, you'll create the wind. I know I must bring wood up your mountain. And I carry the cross. The fruit of the Holy Ghost is found on your mountain. Wow. Lord, you're going to take us out of here in the rapture on your mountain. You told us to flee to the mountains. But I can't have an animal character. I can't be like a beast. And I can't take the mark of the beast. Because it cannot touch the mountain of God. Father God, you went up to the mountains. Here I am by faith, climbing your mountains supernaturally. And I'm planting a signal at the top. I'm raising a banner for help. Help us down here, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to shine my light from the mountain to push the darkness away. Lord Jesus Christ, you told me if I say to this mountain, be you removed. So right now, through the blood of the Lamb, redeemed in the hands of Christ, given power and authority I say to the mountain of Satan be you removed out of my life and cast into the sea in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus Christ Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me pray for everybody's departure and whoever is getting baptized. Come over here so that way we can talk, just give you the address. Father God, we pray for everybody that's leaving. Lord, that you would watch over them. Don't let the devil take the seed out of them. Lord Jesus, that you will go with your children, Lord. That they will not forget this amazing time that we spent in your presence, oh God. That they'll never forget your goodness and mercy that truly does endure forever. Lord Jesus Christ, that they will make a willful commitment to seek your face and not take you for granted. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, I ask you to put a wall of fire around them that the devil cannot take the seed of the word out of them that was given to them. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that not only that, but every demon that was taken out of them by your name and power will not be able to come back in. Even if, if, even if it comes back with seven words. 
Father God, I pray that this is the start of a new walk with their relationship with you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray right now that you protect them. And Lord, standing in the gap, I cancel the plans of the enemy against them. Plans to harden them, harm them, car accidents and all type of problems and all harassments. And we just cancel it unless it's your will to get them through a test. Lord Jesus, thank you for this message tonight. And thank you for your love and mercy. We are so grateful, Lord God, for you being with us because we can't make it without you. And Lord, as others are getting ready to be baptized, we pray it goes well and the night goes well, Father God. And we rise up ready and excited to pursue your mountain. Lucifer, very foolish, fell off the mountain of God. He walked up the stones of fire. But I say, God, we want to walk up the mountain of God. What was trash to him is treasure to us. Hallelujah. And we praise you, Jesus Christ, and we worship you. And we lift you up right now. We worship you, Holy Ghost. For the mountain of God is where we will be taken out of here. Keep us on the mountain of God. Keep us, Lord. May your Holy Spirit fruit provide for us on the mountain of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Wow. We love you guys so much.